I'm Katie Franklin. I'm the Director of Communications for Ohio Right to Life. And I'm Jameson, and I'm one of the interns this summer. Today, we are talking about what happened yesterday, the five things that you should know about the case of Whole Women's Health versus Hellerstedt, which was decided in the U.S. Supreme Court. The um, court ruled that the two Texas abortion regulations that were in question were unconstitutional and were an undue burden on women's right to have an abortion. So the two regulations in question were um, one about an abortionist had to have an admit, um, admitting privileges at a hospital within 30 miles of the, um, the facility and then the second one was um, that all abortion facilities had to meet the standards of other ambulatory surgical facilities. Requirements like admitting privileges and transfer agreements allow for continuity of care between the abortion facility and the hospital. We are aware that abortion facilities consistently fail to meet just basic health and safety standards and so women, when women are transported to um, a local hospital, we want to ensure that there is continuity of care, that there is an official contract where women can get the full treatment that they need after an abortion goes wrong. So essentially what the Supreme Court held is that women's health and safety are subservient to the needs of the abortion industry and a completely um, unnecessary medical procedure. So how does this decision affect Texas? Well, this decision pertains specifically to Texas, although there has been a lot of speculation about how it could impact other states like Ohio. Um, obviously, this is a very bad thing for the women and children of Texas. An important thing to bear in mind is that of the three provisions of House Bill 2, the, the legislation that was challenged in yesterday's ruling, the one provision that did not go challenged was Texas's pain-capable unborn child protection act. Texas can continue um, to enforce that law and protect pain-capable babies. So what's exciting is that in Ohio, um, on our legislative agenda for a while has been the pain-capable unborn child protection act and we are going to continue to fight for that bill to pass through both chambers of the house and the senate and get onto Governor Kasich's desk. There is speculation about what yesterday's ruling could mean in Ohio for our transfer agreement law. Um, and I think it's important to point out the unique difference between the Texas regulation that was decided upon yesterday and the Ohio regulation, which there hasn't been um, any Supreme Court ruling on. And that distinction is that Texas's law pertains to admitting privileges of abortionists specifically, whereas Ohio's law pertains to transfer agreements for all ambulatory surgical facilities. So our law is neutral. It just requires that all ambulatory surgical facilities, abortion facilities, and other surgical facilities alike that they have a transfer agreement with a local hospital to again provide continuity of care and to provide backup care to um, any people who are visiting these um, surgery centers for outpatient procedures. Don't get us wrong, there are plenty of pro-abortion advocates who are looking to sue on Ohio's law and potentially um, yesterday's ruling will open the door um, for a weakening of our laws, but um, I think it's important to say that our laws truly are different from Texas's laws. Here in Ohio, Ohio Right to Life is going to continue on the path of crafting strong legislation that will withstand constitutional muster, um, but still protect human lives and um, continue to incrementally advance the cause for human life. So if you want to get involved and um, just fight for the pro-life movement in Ohio, um, feel free to check out our website, ohiolife.org, and you can go to the Take Action Center, and we have plenty of volunteer opportunities coming up in the coming months. Additionally, if you would like to support the cause for human life here in Ohio, and specifically the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act, you can sign our petition at ohiolife.org, and again, that's the petition to pass the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act and be a part of history here in Ohio and across the United States. Thanks for watching, and subscribe to be alerted every time we post a video. Check out our social media, and then we'll see you next week.